Hi, my name is David. We have Stephanie behind the camera, my wife, and we're here to do an electrical systems orientation on our Sunseeker 2250LE so that you know how the electrical systems work on this rig. So the first thing I want to do is make sure you're aware of the difference between the chassis of the RV and the coach. The chassis is the van portion of this RV. It's the portion that's really like an automobile. Um, it has the motor up in the front and it has power systems that run on battery, like the lights and the radio and the fan for the air conditioner, things like that. It's important that you know that the chassis has its own battery and its own electrical system that's completely separate from the coach. We're really going to focus our attention on the coach in this video. Um, and the coach, uh, just like the chassis, has a battery. The batteries are completely separate. Um, the, the chassis doesn't use the coach battery and vice versa. So now what we want to do is focus on the coach. So come on in. And so here we are in the coach. And the coach has two electrical systems. It has a, a battery a DC system and it has um, an AC system that runs on what, they, what is referred to as shore power, which is essentially plugging into an outlet so that you can, you can power the RV. Um, what's really important to understand is that certain systems in the RV run on the DC battery and other systems run on the AC shore power. And I want you to, I want to start by helping you understand a little bit about what runs on what. So when you're not plugged into AC shore power or running the generator, uh, you're only on battery. And the, the, the items that run on battery are your lighting. So all of your ceiling lighting, your under cabinet lighting, your bed lighting, exterior lighting, bathroom lighting, uh, even the fans run on, um, on 12 volt battery. Okay. Um, so, Oh, oh, that also includes the television over the bunk and the radio over the door. Those run on 12 volt battery as well. Okay. Really important that you understand though, that a battery has a very limited life. If you're only running the refrigerator, uh, you will probably have 24 to 48 hours of battery, depending on how often you're opening the door and how much food you have in it. Um, if you're running the refrigerator and you have lights on and you have the television on, your battery's just not going to last as long. So you do need to pay attention to battery management, okay? Now, we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but um, first I also want to talk about what runs on AC uh, shore power or uh, power that comes in you know, from the plug or from the generator. Uh, the things that you, you have to be plugged in for are your convection microwave oven underneath the stove. So the stove runs on propane, doesn't take power, but the uh, microwave convection oven takes AC power, so plug, plugged in. Also the air conditioning for the coach. So remember the chassis has an air conditioner, but the coach has its own air conditioner and it requires 110 power. And throughout the coach, in the, in the, in the bathroom area, in the bedroom area, um, under the under the cabinets for the sink and even in the bunk overhead there are AC outlets. Those AC outlets only work when you're plugged into an outlet on the outside or running your generator. Um, so now that we've covered that, um, let's talk about um, what happens if you trip a breaker just like in your home. So if you come over here, I want to show you under the bed we have a fuse a fuse box and a breaker panel all combined in one. These are your 110 circuit breakers right here. Okay, so if one trips, you would reset it here. These are your battery fuses. And um, we'll show you when you pick up the van where you have uh, spare fuses and here's where you can trip your breakers and set them back if that goes on you. Okay, so now that you've seen that, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna in a minute, we're going to go outside and talk about how to plug in the shore power, and we're going to show you where the generator is. But before we go outside, I want to show you how to start the generator if you want to run it. 
you do want to you do want to check with your campground because most campgrounds have specific generator hours. So just make sure you're aware of that. Here we have a control panel that has a whole lot of functions on it. We're going to cover all of these functions in different videos, but right now we want to talk about the generator. In order to start the generator, you'll see right here in the top right hand corner, we have a switch. And in the bottom it says prime and stop. So if you want to shut the generator off, that's where you're going to do it. But in order to start the generator, you first push and hold the prime for a minute. Not for long, just for three, four, five seconds. I didn't do it long because I just had it running. And then you hold it up on start to start it. And I'm going to be quiet for this because you might hear it start. Okay, now I'm running my generator. It's as though I were plugged into a, a, a 110 AC outlet on the outside of the camper. It provides me full power. Okay, I'm going to shut it off now. Hold that button down. And now it's, now it's off. Okay, so um, now we want to, we want to uh, take a look at um, how we how we get AC power into the coach. But before we do, I want to tell, talk about one more thing about the battery. I told you earlier that you want to be cautious about your battery life. If you run too much on it, it's, it's, it's going to run out of battery. There are three ways to charge your battery. So the first way is when the chassis is running, the engine for the coach is running, um, the alternator for the chassis is charging the coach battery. So if you're driving to a campground, you might be driving for an hour or two hours or three hours, you should have a 100% of a battery charge when you arrive at your campground. So um, you should have plenty of battery at that point. If you're not sure how much battery you have, you can check it on this control panel. Right here, I have a button for battery. And if I push it, it lights up, it shows me that I have uh, about one third of battery right now, or close to half. So that's a good way to check how much battery you have um, that you can still use, okay? So um, now that I know how much battery I have, let's, let's go outside and we'll talk about uh, the two other ways to charge your battery. Um, come on out and then go right here. So right here, just so you know it's here, this is a battery kill switch. So right now it's in the on position. If I turn it like that, it kills all the power to the coach running from the battery. You're pretty much going to leave it on all the time, but I just wanted you to know that it's there. To leave it on all the time? Well, they're using it, they will. Not when you're home. Like for the winter, you would shut it off or we're live. Okay. So... What we want to do now is we want to talk about how we plug in to shore power. So I'm back, I'm in the back left side of the coach. You'll see we have a storage compartment here. And if you zoom in in here, you're going to see that there's a, a, a big a 30 amp, um, a 30 amp plug. And I'm going to unplug it right now. Now this plug right here is, is getting power from the generator. So this actually provides power to the coach. If I plug it into the generator and I start my generator, I'm going to get power from the generator. If that plug is not plugged in and you're running your generator, you get no power to the coach. So I'm going to unplug it. And when you get to the campground and you pull in, one of the things you're going to want to do is disconnect this from the generator feed it through this hole. You don't want to hang it out this door because you won't be able to close the door and critters can get in here and weather can get in. Um, you're going to pull out as much as you need to reach the plug. Make sure when you park your RV, you're close enough to the plug. Um, the cord is 23 feet long. And when you've got all the cord you need, you're going to close this door over the cord again to stop the critters from getting in and um, keep that, keep that uh, covered up. I have to fix that. So you plug this in outside and then, you know, the outlet at the campground is providing uh, AC power to the RV. So whenever I put this cord back inside the storage compartment, I always just take it and I plug it into the generator outlet so that if I need to use the generator, it's already plugged in. I don't have to go and 
do that. Okay, so we're going to move forward just a little bit. And here behind this door is my generator. You really are never going to have to open this door unless the circuit breaker on the generator trips. Um, so really that's the likelihood of that is pretty slim, but um, it's a pretty easy thing to set. But really you're not going to need to go in here. Um, this pipe right here is the exhaust for the generator. So there's carbon dioxide coming out of this just like the exhaust on your car. So really important if you're going to use the generator, you really need to close the windows on this side of the RV. So this is a sleeping bunk. You've got your kitchen, you've got your bedroom. You want to make sure you just have all of the doors closed. Now, in the unlikely event that the chassis battery dies and you can't start the engine on your motorhome, there's a handy dandy switch right here you can push in. And what will happen is you can, you can start the chassis of the RV by using the battery in the coach, okay? Again, you're, you're likely never gonna need that, but in the event you have a dead battery, you don't need jumper cables, you can just use the battery that's in the coach. All right, that concludes our orientation of the electrical systems of our Sunseeker 2250LE. Thank you very much. Let us know if you have any other questions.